Welcome, Concord Baptist family, to our Sunday morning Bible study. You know, now that my grandchildren are getting older, they're beginning to understand that words and phrases that sound alike can often have very different meanings. So they're beginning to appreciate puns and riddles, such as the old children's riddle, which asks the question, when is a door not a door? Well, when it's a jar. Now, whether you appreciate the humor of that riddle, I hope you don't miss the important truth that it contains. A door will always be a door if it's simply open a little bit ajar. But in the hands of a carpenter, a door can be transformed into something else, into a planter or any other kind of vessel. The same thing is true for us as believers. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses... Uh, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, or extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So the Corinthians have been changed into something else, into new creatures, a new creation in Christ. The old is gone, the new has come, Paul tells them. He, Describes it to the Colossians as being transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of his son. The question then is, how does this life transformation that the Spirit has done in our hearts become a reality in our everyday lives? In other words, how can we experience true biblical change that lasts? Paul gives us a clue in Philippians when he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. And so we know it's not a matter of just self-improvement or pulling yourself up by your bootstraps or determining in the morning to be more kind, but it is a work of the Spirit in our hearts in conjunction with action on our parts, working on our salvation with fear and trembling. Some actions that we can take to experience that biblical change are given to us in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32. Look there with me. Verse 17, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. So the first thing we need to do is change the way we walk, he, Paul says. Do not walk like the rest of the Gentiles walk. You know, each of us has a distinctive walk. In my uh, excursions throughout Farmville over the past seven years, uh, I often run across the same people walking back and forth to the university. And I can now tell you without actually seeing their face uh, who the person is because of their distinctive walk. And so it becomes a term the Bible uses as a metaphor to indicate our conduct, our way of life, the um, patterns that we've developed. And so Paul says, do not pattern yourself, do not conduct yourself uh, like the world does um, in the futility of their mind. And so our walk is connected with the way we think, with our minds, which is why uh, Proverbs um, tells us in 
chapter 4 and verse 30, 23, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And in chapter 23 and verse 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the way we think is a great indicator of what our conduct will be. Paul tells the um, Ephesians, don't pattern or walk in the path of the world because their thinking is wrong. It's futile. It's empty. This is the idea in uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, the idea of vanity, of emptiness. If you're going to think like the world, it's going to put you on the wrong path. Notice it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. It cuts you off uh, from the life that God uh, wants you to have. It will cheat you, uh, Paul says in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, he says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. So thinking like the world will put you on the wrong path. And it will cheat you out of uh, the life that God wants you to experience as a believer. The way you think has to change. Uh, even the poet Emerson, I believe it was um, he that uh, made the poem, sow a thought, uh, reap a deed, sow a deed, uh, reap uh, a habit, sow a habit, reap a character, sow a character, reap a destiny. And so he makes the connection between the way you think with your destiny. The scripture um, here makes that connection. Um, the way you think affects uh, the path that you're on and the destiny. And so we need to stop uh, thinking like the world if we want to experience true um, biblical change. Um, the real danger is found in verse um, 19 who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. It's dangerous to think like the world because you can become callous to the work of the spirit. Um, Paul warned, or the writer of Hebrews um, warns the believers there, he says, uh, uh, listen, you need to uh, change your conduct um, because you have become dull of hearing. So we need to um, be careful of how we think. Because if we think like the world, we can become callous to the ways of God. If you've ever uh, worked in, on a farm or uh, done manual labor where you have to do the same task over and over with your hands, you know the pain of developing blisters and then calluses. Uh, but once the calluses come, you, uh, you don't experience the pain uh, that you used to. Um, you become insensitive uh, to it. It's so very dangerous uh, to think like the world. Uh, it makes you callous to the, the work of the spirit. And you will not be able to experience um, and understand God's will. Uh, this is the truth that Paul uh, gives us in Romans in chapter 8. Listen to him. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then, those who are in the flesh, those who are thinking like the world, those who pattern their conduct after the world, cannot please God. So you will never understand and please God and experience that life transformation in your everyday life um, by thinking like the world because you will then, um, your mind will be occupied with the way the world does things, with the way the world thinks, which is the wrong path to be on. So first of all, change your walk. Secondly, he tells us, verse 20, um, we also need to change who our teacher is. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be, you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So not only change your walk, but change uh, your teacher. Your teacher needs to be the Lord Jesus. And of course, Jesus teaches us through the work of the Spirit, through his word. And so we need to be taught by him. We need to listen to the Spirit. In Psalm 119, the psalmist over nine times uses the phrase, teach me uh, your statutes, your judgments. Uh, he also uses the expression, make me to go in the path of your commandments. He understood, the psalmist understood the importance of being taught by God, by being taught by the Lord, being taught by the scriptures. And so we need the right teacher uh, if we're going to experience true biblical change. And so not, but it's not just a matter of listening and hearing, James tells us, we need to be doers. And you all experience this when you watch uh, videos, uh, exercise videos. Uh, you can uh, watch the video and in your mind do the exercises, but you won't reap the benefit of those exercises unless you actually do them which uh, the writer of Hebrews tells them in chapter 5, verse 14, he says, um, you need to exercise yourself um, in godliness, in the things of God, uh, discern, to discern good and evil. It, it only comes to those who exercise themselves in God's word, who exercise faith, um, which is what the Israelites wouldn't do when they came out of Egypt. They heard the word, they heard the law, but Hebrews tells us they didn't mix it with faith. They didn't exercise faith in what God said. They didn't put it into use. They didn't exercise um, what God said by putting it into uh, everyday uh, use in their lives. And so it didn't profit them. So Paul tells us you need to listen you need to have Christ as your teacher. We need to learn from him and not just to hear the word, but put it into practice. So walk, change the way you walk, change who your teacher is, but also verse 21 tells us the next thing we need to do. Look at verse uh, 21. 20. You put off concerning your form conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man which was created according to God and true righteousness and holiness. 
So versus um, 22 and through 24 there, there has to be a change in the way you think. Your way of what you think has to change. We saw that back in verse 17, uh, you cannot think like the world. Uh, and so the transformation that takes place in your life as a believer has to be connected with the way you think. Well, how can we actually do that in practical terms? Well, Colossians uh, chapter three and verse 16 tells us, uh, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And so uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And so it's the word of God, it's hiding the word of God in our hearts that will help to change the way we think. The psalmist uh, tells us, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. But it's not just a matter of memorizing the words. Again, it's a matter of thinking about what they mean and allowing the Spirit, the work of the Spirit, allowing the Spirit to teach us and put it into practice, to change the way we think, to dwell on it uh, throughout the day. Uh, that may mean writing it down on a card, uh, or however you learn uh, things, new things. Um, for some of you, that may mean putting it on, um, some kind of electronic device that uh, you listen to uh, and hear it that way again and again throughout the day. Um, but we need to be hearing God's word and taking it in, thinking about it, allowing it. It's the word of God that will transform uh, the way we think. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In uh, verse 16. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so again we see this conjunction between the work of the Spirit and looking in spending time in God's Word Exposing ourselves to its truths, uh, just like you do in a mirror when you look into God's word, seeing uh, what needs to be changed there, and allowing the Spirit to reveal to you uh, what it's teaching, and then exercising faith and putting it to work. You will begin to experience uh, true biblical change, turning away from your former conduct, listening to the Lord Jesus, filling your mind with the word of God and allowing it to change the way you think. Uh, this is the truth Paul tells us in chapter 12 of Romans. Um, I beseech you therefore as um, by the mercies of God, um, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual or reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. In other words, don't, don't be pressed into the way the world thinks, which is verse 17 tells us, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, to be metamorphosized by the Spirit through His Word. So it's an action on your part, spending time in the Word, studying, and opening yourself to the work of the Spirit to change the way you think. This will begin to help you uh, make those changes and experience uh, the work of the Spirit 
in your life. The last thing, the fourth thing that we need to change back in uh, Ephesians chapter four, beginning in verse 25, therefore putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So this fourth thing uh, we need to do is to change our wardrobe, so to speak. This is the principle that he mentioned earlier in uh, verses 22 through 24. It says, put off the old man uh, in his conduct, the old way of doing things, and put on the new man, which was created in righteousness and true holiness, which is the work of the spirit. So putting off the old, taking, getting rid of the old garments and putting on the new garments. This is an action that we can do practically in our everyday lives to experience the biblical change. As we uh, fill our minds with God's word, he's going to show us things that we need to put off. The old clothes, the old way of doing things. I think um, I've mentioned to our Sunday school class um, in the past, uh, when Renee and I first got married, uh, she went through my closet. I still had clothes from my older brother um, that uh, were clearly outdated and worn out, and I needed to get rid of them. Uh, and so one of the first things she did is we changed um, changed my wardrobe. Um, and got rid of the old and uh, got some new uh, clothing. As believers, uh, now that we are God's children, uh, we have a different um, wardrobe to wear. The things that he mentions here is, therefore putting away lying, so put off, take off the old clothes, the lying, and let each one of you speak truth with, with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So it's not just enough to, uh, here, notice, to put off lying, because if you just stop lying, uh, nothing is really change. You're just a liar who isn't lying at uh, the present time. You have to become something else. You can't just stop doing the old. When the Spirit exposes something in your life, you can't just stop doing that activity. You need to replace it with a godly habit uh, with the power of the, of the Spirit. So lying is the uh, habit and way of doing things, a pattern of the uh, old man. And we need to put on, become uh, speakers of truth with his neighbor. And so you stop lying, but you also become something else. You become a truth teller. When you become a truth teller, now you're no longer known as a, as a liar. You've become, by the power of the Spirit, something else. Why should we do that, he says? Because we are members one of another. Our responsibility as believers is to grow uh, in our relationship with Christ, to experience that transformation so that we can help others in the body to mature. God has given um, people and individuals in the church to bring about um, edification and growth and equipping. Uh, he's given pastors and teachers, evangelists. All of these individuals are given to the church to help us to understand what God wants us to do and to help us to do it, to equip us. 
And when we put our gifts and, and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, it will help the body, the church, to grow and to do what it needs to do um, in the world. And so we are members one of another, and it's our responsibility to grow as believers so that we can help others grow in the body as well. So put away lying and become a truth teller because we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So put off prolonged anger and instead of taking your anger to bed with you um, deal with it be reconciled take care of the problem uh, before the sun goes down because anger in itself isn't a sin even jesus was angry with the uh, people selling things in the temple making his house a house of merchandise and he took a whip and drove them out of the temple but prolonged anger and carried over can quickly turn into wrath and um, vengeance against others and so we need to take care we need to allow the anger to help us deal use the anger to help you deal with the problem not go after the person become vengeful which anger can do if it's held on to and, and um, mold over and carried over day after day, it begins to uh, turn into wrath. And so we need to put off wrath, take care of things by being reconciled with that individual, by using our energy to bring about uh, reconciliation between ourselves and others and between believers uh, in the body of christ so put off anger um, become those who deal and help bring about reconciliation why uh, he says don't give place to the devil don't let him get his foot in the door he gets his foot in the door when we prolong anger and allow it to become wrath because the wrath of man will not work the righteousness of god you cannot experience the life transformation of the spirit true biblical change if you hang on to anger and allow it to turn into vengeance and wrath against others allow the spirit to help you deal with the situation become um, a person who brings about reconciliation so that you don't give room for the devil to bring about discord and chaos so many churches today have been ruined because people have held on to their anger and bitterness and uh, it has destroyed the work of the spirit in the church and put people on the wrong path because that's the way the world thinks get back uh, make them pay for what they've done to you. And that's what hanging on to anger will do. It quickly turns into wrath. And so don't give the devil a foot in the door, deal with it. Um, put on um, the Lord Jesus Christ and be reconciled to God and with one another. Next he says, let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him work with his hands that which is good, that he may have something to give those who have a need. So put off the uh, stealing and thievery, but don't just stop stealing. Because again, if you just stop stealing, you're a thief who isn't stealing at the moment. You need to become something else. In this case, you need to become a worker. Someone who works with his hands and not only works with his hands, but becomes a giver. Then when you become a giver and, and um, thinking about others instead of yourself, then you are no, no, no longer looked upon as a thief, but as a giver because you become 
something else. So don't just stop doing the wrong activity, the old way of doing things. Find out what God's um, conduct wants you to uh, be, the pattern that he wants you to develop. In this case, become a worker uh, and a giver. Put off, put on. Then he goes on to say, verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is necessary for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And so put off the wrong speech, corrupt speech, a language that doesn't um, accomplish God's work, and put on um, words, use words that will encourage and build up others. So you can't just stop using bad language and corrupt words, tearing others down. That's good that you stop doing that. But with the power of the Spirit, you need to ask the Spirit to teach you things to say, to encourage, to build up others. You cannot just um, put away the old, you have to put on the new. How sad uh, when Jesus was here, he said, uh, oh Jerusalem, how I wanted to gather you like chickens, but they would not. He, he um, Anyone who wanted to be healed throughout the country, wherever he went, he healed uh, those who were diseased and demon-possessed. But remember, he used the parable. It says, um, Israel is like the person where uh, people came in and cleaned out the house, but they didn't replace it with anything. And so the demons came back, and it was worse off than it was before because they didn't receive Jesus as their Messiah, um, they continued down that same path. They became callous to God's work, to the Spirit's work, and they put Jesus to death. They rejected him as the Messiah. And then in 70 AD, God brought the destruction of the temple by Titus in the Roman Empire. So it's not enough to just put off the old way of doing things, the old conduct, the old man, the old patterns need to go, but we need to develop and practice new things. We need to practice uh, speaking the truth. We need to practice dealing with and reconciling with people. We need to practice uh, working. We need to practice uh, using words that build up. And then finally he says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted. Put off all these things, um, the wrath and the malice, all these other things, and put on kindness, and tenderheartedness, forgiving one another, even as God has forgiven you. So stop doing these other things. Get rid of those. Clean out your closets, believers. Get rid of all those clothes uh, and invest and go to God's word and get that new set of clothing from the Spirit of God. Let can transform your minds and teach you uh, those new patterns that will help you experience that true biblical life-changing work of the Spirit in your everyday life. Victory over the old man, the old way of life. And even, um, even at my age, uh, now that I've 
hit the magic uh, 70, um, there are still things um, in my closet that uh, as I look into the word of God, I need to get, I need to get rid of that garment. It's, it's the old way of thinking. It's the old way of doing things. I need to put on the new with the help of the spirit of God and experience that transformation. Um, true biblical life changing um, patterns that will help me um, accomplish God's purpose in the body of Christ and further his kingdom and his purposes. Now we've only scratched the surface here. I trust that you'll take some time, commit some of these verses to memory. Think about them. This uh, an important principle, put off the old way, put on the new and uh, open yourselves to the word of God and allow the spirit to teach you this new way of living that will transform you and those that you come in contact with. God bless you as you uh, seek to reach out to those uh, in your community, the people that God brings into your life this week. God bless you.